G'day guys, it's Jarrah here and welcome to Detective Hank and the Golden Sneeze. So I saw this game on Steam and I was like, oh this looks fun, so let's try it out. Welcome to Detective Hank and the Golden Sneeze. Do you want an explanation on how to play? Yes. Detective Hank and the Golden Sneeze is an interactive whodunit visual novel that features a different culprit on each playthrough. There are three key points here. One, interact whodunit. In this game, you will have to find out who committed the crime in the story? Pay close attention, look for clues when you're talking to people. So I love like detective solving things and I saw this and I was like, oh this looks like fun and cute, so let's try it. Vision novel. This game has a lot of text. If you like reading books, you will like this game. But if you're more of an action gamer, we ask you to be patient. Three, different culprits on each playthrough. Every time a new game is started, one of the several storylines is chosen. Every storyline has a different culprit for the crime committed and every storyline would have different clues that lead you to the criminal. But watch out, clues in one storyline may be red herring, distractions in another. Keep a pen and paper ready to take notes on the clues in your current storyline. The game will help you a bit on standby chat, but True Detectives has his or her own method of de deduction. Good luck. Choose the storyline, they each have a different culprit. Random. Got my pen and paper. For this playthrough, we have chosen storyline two. Cool. About to save your game. Game saved. The night is young and the town is asleep, save for a few exceptions. Very few exceptions. A wool of the museum is blown to dust and a figure waltzes inside the building. Before anyone can react, the figure steals an object and disappears back out through the hole. Guards rush in, but it's too late. The damage has already been done. And just like that, the night continues as if nothing ever happened. Except for that one event. Chapter 1. Now you sneeze me, now you don't. It's been morning for a while by the time I get out of bed. And same as ever, as every other morning, I'm a man with a mission. Coffee. My wife greets me as I enter the living room. So here you are. How is it, my Hank? How's my Hank doing? Coffee. Oh, you poor thing. Mary hurries to the dining table and rushes a cup of lukewarm coffee back to me. This coffee is probably five hours old. I should have gotten it myself. I should have gotten up at a decent hour. But there's something about this morning ritual of mine such that I never want it to change. A happy morning is suddenly rudely disturbed by the ultimate sound of doom. Ringing, the ringing of impending work. Hello. Er, uh, Hank, the museum's been robbed. I want you to go and investigate. Understood, Captain. I'll be right there. Honey? Yes? I need my hat. You can get that yourself, honey. You already had your coffee. As I should, honey. Mm, how do I look? Like you're gonna punch some bad guys? Take care, honey. Take care? Oh wait, come back. I forgot to tell you something. I'm picking up my parents to tea after work. That's nice. I like it when they come over for tea. Unless they're stealing my cookies, of course. Aw, oh, come on, honey. What does that ever happen? Last week. You got a point. I'll try to keep them in check this time. Take care, honey. Mm. The morning has nearly passed when I finally arrived at the museum. It's crowded with more policemen than visitors. Which isn't saying much, there are no visitors. Besides, I thought our police force was bigger than this. The museum's director, Mr. Abram, riding that down. A-B-R. Comes out to meet me as I enter the next room. Oh, thank goodness you came, detective. The whole place is a mess. Glad to be of service, Mr. Abraham. Could you fill me in on what happened? You see, the thing is, last night I almost 
prized possession. The goat's knees was stolen. You see, that's a thing. It's been in the museum for decades. It has great history value and it was still being studied by the most famous of professors. Some say it holds great mystical powers. But it, it, at the least, it's a big lump of gold. It is clear. It is to be clear that the golden sneeze is worth more than its weight in gold. And you know that? Yes. Mr. Abraham, I need to ask you a couple of standard questions. Where were you? Mr. Abraham, where were you the night of the robbery? I was at a party looking for new investors for the museum. It's my job as museum director to expand the facility, so we are looking for some new money. Did it go well? Can't really say. These things take time. A party is usually the first, after all. After that, we invite them over to the museum, let them have a look, and maybe they'll invest in us. Alright. That gives me a good overview of the situation. I didn't tell you if he's lying or not. Have you heard? Have you seen any suspicious activity in the area? Um, I'm afraid that there hasn't been any activity around here, Detective. Nobody has come here in weeks. Can you tell me why? We haven't changed much around lately. It's hard of a museum of ancient histories to find new old things. Customers sometimes just get bored. But I am sure we can manage. So you haven't seen anything on? No, I'm sorry. Tell me about the golden sneeze. Of course, detective. The golden sneeze is roughly 200 years old. It's That's about a century before the mechanical revolution to be. In those days, people still believed in magic. So that records on it a bit muddled, but we do have backstory on it. There were a couple who had... One single daughter, they were very poor but lived a happy life. One day, their daughter fell ill. Her health deteriorated. Within a week, it seemed like she would not survive. The couple were devastated, but one fatal night, a monk appeared at their house. Though the couple did not have much to share, nonetheless, they gave the monk a meal. The couple talked a lot, and the monk learned of their, daughter, of their ill daughter. He would not let it turn into a tragedy. The monk summoned their daughter and held up a handkerchief. He said to her, Though you know only fear, you will be safe from the moment onwards. At that moment, the girl sneezed louder than she had ever before, and when she opened her eyes, the golden sneeze laid in the handkerchief. Magic or not, her parents did not want to accept the gold sneeze as a gift, but the monk is insisted upon it. He replied, People with such generosity deserve to have more to share. In the next moment, he disappeared. The parents sold the object and the daughter never went hungry again. At least that's one version of the story. In other versions, the daughter drank molten gold and sneezed. The gold sneeze came out of her dying breath. But we prefer the first version, it's more kid friendly. Thank you for an enlightening talk, Mr. Abraham. I heard enough. I'm gonna look around the crime scene, let's see. Constable! How's the investigation going? Quite well, Detective. We finished up here as we speak. That's good to hear. What have you discovered? Well, one of the outer walls is missing. It's very likely the thief ended through there. We found a couple of drops of oil that did not belong in the museum. There was an expensive torn off piece of blue fabric. Oil. Blue. That's all. Okay, thank you, officer. You may go now. I think I've seen enough of the crime scene. I could go look for other clues in the area. Maybe see if there's anything fishy in the museum. Or I could go visit my usual suspect. Where shall I go? I'm gonna look in the area. Let's talk. Let's have a look at the outside. From out here, it looks like the thief could have gone multiple directions. The broken wall edges on the alleyway. Even though they took out the wall, they could have easily gotten away unseen. Last night nobody was around so the thief probably got got away just fine. There's not much else out here. Afterwards I was making my way towards town when suddenly What in tarnations was that? Mister? Mister? You have to go help. It's horrible. 
Luca approaches me. She has a weird way of talking and even weird intuition of what she's probably in shock. It's okay, little girl. I can help you. What's your name? And tell me, I guess. There was something wrong with the girl. She was neither injured nor shot. I'm Hank, and I'm a detective. What did you just see? Someone set up a, 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 a bomb further down the street. Did you get a good look at whoever did it? No. Well, why not? Because I didn't have a mirror on me when I did it. A kid was clearly not who she seemed to be. Explain yourself, Tommy. Enough with the games, detective. I found you, and I'm glad I've caught your attention. You know about the golden sneeze. It's mine, and I want it back. You may have already noticed, but I'm not going to help you with that little girl. Then I'm afraid we aren't going to be friends, now are we? Goodbye, detective. I'm sure we'll meet again. That girl ran away. I gave a chase. I saw her run into the alleyway and dive into a small hole. Fortunately, I didn't fit through. I called it, called it in, but by the time she was already long gone, it was clearless of me giving my name, even though it might be fake. I now have something to identify her by. I'll get you next time, Tommy. Um, really wrote Tommy evil. Where shall I go? I want to look in the museum some more. Let's see what I can find. The crime stuff's really old. There's also a canoe that's even older. I'm just gonna check the guest book and see. Oh dear God, this doesn't look too good. This museum hasn't seen a visitor in a week, which I knew. Some detectives have a list of criminals and crime suspects making their work easier. Well, it makes my work easier when I can find some suspects. Hank, what a coincidence you being in my restaurant. But Sapphire, the country makes my job all more difficult. So, was that a warrant in your pocket, or were you just happy to see me? It's just a warrant. Miss Carpel, I suspect that you're guilty of robbery that occurred this morning. Hey, I'm running an honest business here. Boys. Yes, ma'am. My friend here needs to cool off. See to it. Yes, ma'am. Where shall I go? End the day. The day is near the end and I head home. Along the way, I receive a call from the office. <sighs> hey, what's the size of the Golden East case? Well, first of all, there's the crime scene. One of the outer walls is missing, and it's very likely the thief entered through there. We found a couple of drops of oil do not belong to the museum. There was an expensive torn off piece of blue fabric found. It strikes me as odd that the artifact was stolen while there was no visitors signed in at the museum. And then I met the girl. <sighs> There's no time to talk about your private life, detective. Hear me out, Captain. She blew up a part of the street when I got a hold of her. She asked me to give her the golden sneeze. I got more than a hunch that she's connected to the case. What well, on, detective? This will help the investigation. Immediately, can't read English. We got a lot of people in this case, and I want to make sure that security at the museum is up to snuff. Tomorrow, you help Mr. Adams ensure that there's not so much as a guppy can sneak in there. Understood? Understood, Captain. I don't like it, but it seems to be best security expert at the Bury. So now I'm stuck patching up the museum. Oh well. I don't mind looking at that stuff. Got make sure to respect all. Displayed my case very well. Go home before Mary does. The place is dark, so I stumble to find the light switch. Sometimes it's nice having the house to spell. I spell too soon. Hey, hon, I'm home. Hey, honey, I'm home. I brought you. I brought your in laws with me. Great to see you back, sweetie. Let me say hi to your parents. Peter, how's life? How's the business? Same old Hank, making a lot of steam. No pun intended, of course. <laughs> let's just let's just say that we can handle the pressure. Paul, it's so nice to see you. So, tea and cookies, everyone. As always, it gets late quickly when Merritt's parents are over. Ooh, two dads. In my lifetime, I never once understood the jokes of the terrible in-laws. I've always seemed to get along with mine perfectly well. Granted, I don't have a mother-in-law, but Mary's parents don't give me that evil eye when I went to pick her up on her first date either. Plus, I love to hear the stories of the robot factory. 
said maybe that one time they conspired to steal my cookie. Blepped last week. Honey, I'm gonna show you then the new doll on mechanic to Peter. We'll be right back. Me and left alone with the father in law is so awkward though. So I read in the news that you got some work to do in the Golden Sneeze case, don't you, Hank? Snap. Now nah, he's starting to interrogate me. I hate when my in laws want to know about my work. Come on, Hank. Reverse psychology, you know this. How do you know about that, Paul? Well, I just told you I read it on the news. Double snap. Why can't I be more professional at home? Fine, Paul, let's see who's going to be interrogating who this evening. I must choose my replies carefully if I want to hold my ground. Yes, about that news. A lot happens in the city today. Golden Snooze is on. Tomorrow will be something else. A Golden Snooze is something, isn't it? How much is it worth? Oh, good. He's not switching topics. Why can't I leave my wife at home? Have you seen the museum, by the way? I've seen all the buildings. There are a lot of buildings in the city, but I must. I've seen most of them on investigation. We saw a lot when look around town yesterday. Good. Not worry about my job. Oh, drop my pen. Need that to write. By the way, are there any suspects in the case? You're not gonna let go, are you, Paul? That depends. Have you been at the museum lately, Paul? Yeah. During our work, walk around town, Peter and I actually went to the museum to look at the exposition. Blue expensive. They had such beautiful things on display. Wait a minute. Nobody has seen the museum in months. Why is Paul saying this? Why, Paul? Have you stolen the golden sneeze while you were there? Uh, I mean, I was just trying to make a conversation, you know, as he whip snap. I guess not even white light can get past you, can it? I'm glad the police have you on their side, you're very good at it. It's a pretty neat mechanic! I installed it yesterday. So what have you two been up to? Oh, nothing much. Just standard father to son-in-law interrogation. Wait, what? To be continued. I still think it's him. That looks expensive and blue. Oh, what a great morning. I've, in a few minutes we can open the doors and I hope we can get some customers. With emphasis on the word hope. So you must be So you must be Mr. Adams. Who are you when you doing here, little girl? Where is Adam? Where's A Abraham? I can't read. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I guess you really don't know. Wait a minute. How did you get in here? Easily. There's a hole in your wall. I'll be seeing you soon, Abraham. A golden opportunity. I woke up early this morning and had a quick cup of coffee. The case is bustling me. Let's fast forward. Hey, honey. Need my hat. What's the time? Or I'm late to work. Alright, see you later, honey. Bye, honey. Go visit your dad and dad at the robot factory. Good morning, Mr. Abraham. How are you do Whoa, you don't look good. What happened? Detective, I'm afraid that my security needs more work than I thought. In this very room, a little girl snuck in and said hi before we opened. What? Did she sneak through the hall in your wall? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Mr. Abraham, no offense, but I think it's high time we patched that hall. This is high noon. Did that girl have grey hair, blue cape, by any chance? How how do you know? I didn't. But I do have a hunch that we need to secure the museum as quickly as possible. Mr. Abraham, do you have any... Do you have anyone in place to get your museum up to snuff? I have a couple of handymen, and I know someone who could get some building materials. But where am I going to get the equipment to fix that gaping hole? Well, I might know of someone. Never thought I'd give him real estate advice. So who is this fabled person? Mr. Abraham, do you know any terrible in-law jokes? Detective, I'm a cure, not a comedian, so no, I do not know any terrible in-law jokes. Good. My in-laws make enough terrible jokes already. Later. Hank! Henry! I mean, Mr. Abram, what brings you to our facility so early in the morning? Pa, we need some equipment to fix the museum. Any suggestions? But of course! Walk this way, men! 
A new small heat gun, it's pretty much anything. Moving large objects, breaking down walls, building them up again, or even expanding your building, you name it, it does it. You can't go wrong with him. That sounds like an that sounds like an excellent machine, Mr. Smith. Well, where am I going to put it after the renovations? Well, you could always just rent it, I guess. If that's fine with you, shall we start on the paperwork? I think we shall, Detective. I will be right back with you. I'll see you in a bit, Mr. Adams. The reason I first became a detective is hard to explain. Whenever something is stolen, the thief the thief tries not to leave an accused behind. So the only evidence of chain is some think stolen is being gone. Although a broken wall stands out pretty blatantly, but that's beside the point. Victims try to make peace with their losses, sometimes in vain, and that's where it comes in. I use the thief clues to try and make the crime undone because in the end your property should feel as safe as it was before. Maybe in a blue dress. Hank, funny meeting you here. And then I found my job was far from done. I was just going around with the boys, looking at some of the equipment. We're gonna make my restaurant extra pretty. As long as you pay for your equipment afterwards, you can look as much as you want. You know a fun detective. You know what? I will look at more equipment. Thank goodness she's gotten bored quickly. I didn't want to deal with her shenanigans this early in the morning. Excuse me, detective. Mr. Adams. Is that the paperwork went well? Uh, yes, and with the museum and going to the news lately, I could stand to make a bit more extra money. Hold on, Abraham, what are you saying? Does this mean that the heist benefits you? What's your part in the whole thing? You still go and sneeze. I get better get to the bottom of this. Talk about news. The news is very eager to write about you, wasn't it? Pretty morbid, actually, when I said suddenly you're more the newspapers than you could ever read in a day. They didn't write nearly as much about me when I paid for an advertisement. So the news was eager to write you ever since you became the highest. Good to know. How did it benefit you? Who cares about the news? Any press is good press, right? Even if it's because of a heist. I'm glad that because of the news, a lot of people heard about the museum. Haha, the news has brought more potential customers in. But did it help? So, if I have this straight, the customers don't matter, the investors' money does. I'm glad that with the museum in the news, the number of visitors have picked up nicely. I've never had as many visitors as I did yesterday. They brought in quite some money. You slipped up, Abraham. Sounds like good motive. But I need evidence. Your in-laws are uh, quite the couple, detective. What do you mean, Cher? I'm so happy for them. Sorry. I'm so happy for them. I don't know. They they can work together. I don't know many couples who could handle that. I have so many trouble entertaining the, mis the missus with tales from my work that I don't even bother trying anymore. What about you, detective? Is your partner interested in hearing about how you were punching bad guys? Excuse me, did I say something wrong? No, Mr. Abraham. I just realized that I did something very stupid this morning. I won't pry, but it's best if you fix it then. By the way, Detective, I'm heading back to the museum now. Would you like to ride with me? Hmm, interesting question. I stay here, I can keep an eye on Sapphire. And maybe check out the robot a bit more. But if I go and check in the museum a second time, and maybe catch Tommy again. So where should I go? Stay factory. No, thank you, Mr. Adams. But I think I have some work in this factory to do. It's fine either way. I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Good now. I can focus on other important things. Hey, hon. A quick kiss. I don't need to go. I'm meeting a friend this afternoon. That's fast. I just wanted to talk to you about something. Can't wait till it's not. I'm in a hurry. I guess I can. It's not like you're gonna get kidnapped or anything. Thanks, my Hank. Come over here. Mwah. Now you be a good boy and don't upset my dad's, okay? Love ya. Love you too, hun. What should I do now? Inspect robot. Robots are powerful machines. The thief might use one to steal the golden sneeze. Fortunately, I'm not that good with robots. What should I even look for? Expect up close. I see the joints of the robots are very oily. 
No kidding, these things are very fast. The paint must keep them oiled at all times. Wait a minute. This oil looks the same that we found in the museum. I hope Peter and Paul haven't done anything to do with this. What shall I do? Ask Paul. Because he's wearing blue. Hey guys, what's up? Hey guys, wait. Hey guys, what's up? Prophet, so hope. Da -da -ding. It's pretty much uneventful morning. We only rented out one of the robots for the week so far. I prefer selling them. Come on, guys, cheer up. Practice some sales talk on me. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Good day, dear sir. How can I help you? Do you have any specific, specific projects you're looking to work on? There's no chance that this robot was using burglary, so I need more information out of them. But I don't want to give Peter and Paul the impression that I see them as potential criminals. Yes. I'm working on a project involving... I'm moving lots of heavy objects around. Well, do I have the thing for you? A new Gotham, Gotham machine can move the most and biggest things around in no time. For a fraction of the cost of a full working force, all your bricks in your building will be in place within an hour. Just don't move some old objects with it or crush it like fingers. What should we do now? I'm not happy with stuff I the car mob boss showing up the factory. Let's see what she wants. Good morning, Miss Capone. How is your restaurant coming along? Ugh, detective, please don't pretend to be okay with me. But yeah, the restaurant is going along well. What do you want to know? I'm curious about how your restaurant's going. Well, I didn't expect you to show some compassion for once, but if you must know... I am going to out of boredom to my teeny tiny restaurant! Imagine, Hank, a ballroom! Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh! And of course, I just bought the place, so I need some renovations. So far, you're usually up to no good. And you're telling the truth, or are you playing me? Let's get the truth from you. Think you can drive one of these? Drive? <laughs> hey, that's so funny. These things don't have wheels. But no, I don't intend on controlling one of those things. Big boys myself. They're a bit too cruel for me. I'm letting one of the boys handle the robots for the restaurant. I see you got your builders already. Yes. With this restaurant, I hope to bring honor to the memory of my father. The loving father he was, the way I remember him. But he's still in prison. Alive and well. Don't ruin the moment, Hank. But I have to thank you, Detective. What? For not accusing me of anything. With my old man being the way he is, everyone always expects the worst of me. It's not like it's criminal activity runs in your blood or anything. So it's nice to have a normal conversation. For once. I agree, Sapphire, for once. What shall I do now? I was heading home when the phone rang. Hey, we received the numbers to the gold scenes that we hate the old show. Get out of the big black market there, like you could spot to check it out. Understood, Captain. I'll take the next train over tonight. Then I suddenly spotted something from the corner of my eye. The other chairs were a scruffy looking man holding a package. Excuse me, sir. May I see what you're holding there? It was clearly going to sleep, but before I could relax. Sorry, bud. They didn't pay me enough to talk to you. A car with a roaring engine screeched, tires drove by, the thug jumped inside and escaped. I immediately gave a chase. Unfortunately, I couldn't run fast enough or hail a cab in time, so the car got away. If that tip was right, I knew the Golden Seas was heading to the train station. It was time to recruit some reliable backup. I have to talk to you, it's really important. Honey, what's going on? You're making no sense. Well, do you remember how this morning you were free and I went to work and we barely saw each other? Yes. I should have asked you to come along with me. It would have been way more fun. Oh, that's sweet of you to say, but that's not all. That's not all. I think the gold sneezes heading to the train station then to the old hay show this evening. And you thought that you'd take me instead of a policeman? Yeah. I need someone I could trust to blend in with. Someone who likes punch bad guys, maybe. Pretty much, yeah. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go. What are we waiting for? Let's go now. To be continued. 
And that is where we're going to end today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you liked it, let me know in the comments below and tell me what do you think of this series so far. Do you like it? I don't know. Anyway, dry out, guys, in the next video. Sarcasm out. And let's bring it in for a base because of a hug. Bye bye. See ya. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.